today's episode is about providing a plan and how that individual thing itself will actually help with your conversion rate on any individual conversation that you're having, any individual buyer, any seller, any, any, any relationship that you're looking to cultivate in order to, you know, eventually get it to transact. Uh, it's something that we've trialed within our business recently that I go into a little bit of a case study, but it's really transformed taking a little bit of direction and actually grabbing the bull by the horn, so to speak, and giving that direction and giving them an opinion of what it would look like in this current moment, regardless of how serious they are, can definitely help with your execution. Hopefully you enjoy the episode. Welcome to Rethink Real Estate. My name is Ben Brady, and this is a real estate podcast aimed to deliver sales strategies, marketing tips, and business insights from industry experts and myself to build a listing-focused business for the future. Let's get into it. A little bit of an experiment that we've been playing with over the last little while with Harcourt's Auctions and just my execution on bringing people on board that I wanted to go through with people today. A short, sharp episode so that I, I can get directly to the point is that having a plan makes all the difference. And what I mean by that is there was this um, email uh, called Action Selling, I think it was. I don't know that it came across my inbox and it really caught my attention, which said, if you don't have a plan, no one will execute. And I'm like, okay. You've got me. So I, I read a little bit of it. I watched a little video. It was a quick little five minute video. And uh, and the the thing that I, I it said is that so many people present their product, they'll ask closing questions or opinions of it, whatever it may be. They don't give a plan around the next step. So I at the moment we're trialing Harcourt's auctions in a few different marketplaces at the moment where we've seen the average days on market increase. And I'm doing the presentations with a few new team members that are going in and penetrating that marketplace. Chris is sending out those emails like we've spoken about so many times on the on the podcast. And you know we're engaging with agents. We've got a gentleman who's going after five million plus listings. Um, in those marketplaces with higher average days, we've got two other young gentlemen who are going after the other listings and speaking to the agents. And we're doing a great deal of agent presentations to talk to them about the auction process. Um, part of that is in Miami um, and, and, that, and that Florida marketplace um, that surrounds that. And then also the other one is in Tennessee. And it's, it's really interesting to see that at the moment, we decided to take two different approaches. First one is that when we're doing the agent presentation to take them through the auction process is that we're going through and then we're providing them, um, we're not providing them with a timeline. We're saying to them, hey, look, take that information. We'll send you over an informational email with everything that we went through today so that you can go through and you can think about it. And then you can talk about maybe presenting it to your sellers after you've thought about it further. Whereas in Tennessee, we took a little bit of a different approach and, and we use it in a couple of other areas as well, where We've actually sent the informational email going, hey, look, we're going to send you over everything that we went through today, case studies, everything to prove that you know we are who we say we are. But then also there's going to be a second email that comes, which is actually sort of a proposed timeline. Now, again, you may or may choose not to move forward with this, but it's a proposed timeline that you could take your sellers where it's got a recommended bidding to start from price, you know, and then the intricate steps that are needed to be taken to actually move forward with the auction, removing it from the MLS and then getting the inspections and reports done and then, you know, and then um, going back live on the marketplace, the lead up time, what the auction date will be, you know, and then what are the steps that we need to be filled out to get the auction contract going. Now, again, it doesn't mean that you're definitely going ahead with it. It's just obviously something that you can take to them with some format of a plan. So funny, we have an 80% strike rate of listing a property or even getting to a point where we're doing a presentation with the seller and the agent if we give the plan. Um, where we're not doing that, like I think the success rate's been about 10%. Now, again, this is not a wide ranging trial where we've done hundreds and hundreds of these. This is over like, I think about 25, 25 presentations over, over the Tennessee and a few other marketplaces and then the Miami marketplace. And the Miami one is that there's just no call to action to move forward. They're not taking anything with any cause of action to a seller that actually then is showing them you know, exactly what it is. And it is quite a simple email that it's actually then a timeline and a plan of what do we need to do in order to move forward. Because again, now it just leads me to the next element of this is that is that going into any meeting with your sellers or with possible clients or with buyers that are looking to purchase, I sat down and did a business plan with some of the best agents that we deal with um, out of Newport Beach. And I said to them, hey, I want to go through and I want to talk to you about what your pipeline looks like. And I'm like, and they're like, well, so what do you mean by pipeline? I'm like, okay, if there's somebody that's communicated with you, whether it's a buyer, whether it's a possible listing, whether it's an agent, sorry, whether it's a seller or a 
uh, sphere of influence client that has said that they're looking at moving forward in the future, like they're thinking about real estate this year, or they've just reached out to you in general. Let's write it down and let's have an idea of what the gross commission income could be if, you know, say 50% of all of that came off. We sat down and we wrote down about... I think it was 25 transactions that possibly could happen from buyers that are currently looking to buyers that possibly could come into play to all of these different situations, sellers that are looking into the future that have mentioned to them they want to sell this year, ones that have you know just reached out to ask what the real estate market's doing. They don't really have any intention of selling, but we put them into the list as well. And all in all, there was a, a little over a million dollars worth of GCI that was there possibly in the pipeline. And I said to them is that, hey, look, let's say that 50% of that came off. Okay. Um, you know, you've only in, in February of this year is when we were talking about this and you've got a fair bit more in the, a fair bit more of the year to come in order to actually continue to fill that pipeline up. So all in all, I think their business is looking in incredible shape. If you've got a million dollar pipeline, you know, with the possibility of even 50% of it coming off, you've got half a million dollars that then there'll be further momentum. Now, I said to them is that one of the key attributes to make sure that I believe in order to execute that is to actually present each individual person that you're speaking to with some format of a timeline. Meaning that if you've got a buyer that reaches out to you saying, I've got a budget of X, I'm looking for this, or you sit down and you do a buyer meeting with them or whatever it is, it's actually then giving them the next steps of, okay, so at this point, this is what we're going to do is I'm going to set you up on this. I'm then going to do this by this date. And then we're going to do this by this date. And by this date, we're going to check back in with you. Okay. Show them that element of a plan so that then they understand. Otherwise, I do believe that people without a plan or without some kind of cause to action is that they just flail and they don't know where to go to next and they choose not to forget and choose not to engage or talk about it any further. I believe that with your sellers as well, even if they've said, you know, hey, look, I'm probably not even considering selling at the moment. You know, I'm just going to, I just want an understanding of what my property is worth. It's like, no problem. Look, I'm going to give you an understanding of what we believe your home is worth, but then I'm going to give you a little bit of a timeline that if you were to come into the marketplace in this time, how it would look, because that timeline itself will actually have an influence on what your property sells for, because this price that I'm giving you right now is only for this market at this moment, based on what else is on the marketplace in this time. So let's do this is that let's give me an idea. Let, let me give you an idea of what it's worth right now with the competitive with the competitive comps that are there, but then also with all the other properties that are on the market from a supply and demand perspective. And then let's put a timeline in place for me to update that on a regular basis based on what that is. And again, that that plan of action in order to communicate with them gives you an opportunity to continue to communicate. And it doesn't and it doesn't let that relationship have any gray area, if you like. It doesn't let that relationship to be ambiguous in any way, shape or form. It is what it is. And there is a plan in place in order to then execute. I think that then that leads into anybody that's a tiny bit more serious about it. Hey, let me put a plan in place for you right now that if you were to put your property on the marketplace, what would that look like? Now, again, the dates don't even have to be the dates. Why don't I just put it in for uh, you know week one and then week two and then week three, and I can give you a calendar of sale. I think that there's this part of people that are constantly looking for guidance, constantly looking for the next step, constantly looking for a a direction that needs to be taken. And this all stems back to something that we spoke about a little bit, you know, a little bit ago is, you know, one of my episodes that I just recently did was, you know, the silent objection. People will pretend that they know what they need to do in you know, so that therefore they they don't feel as vulnerable or they're not as open with the perfectly good stranger that they don't actually know what are the next steps that need to be taken here. You give some direction, you give some guidance and you follow it up through that perspective. And you know we've proven it just in a, in a small trial marketplace that we are literally batting at a very, very high conversion percentage by just simply providing a plan. And now we're going to add that into every single element of what we do is that plan is going to be in place regardless of how serious that person is. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully you can integrate it into your business in some way, shape or form, whether it's a buyer, whether it's a future client that's selling their home, whether it's a future buyer that's looking at buying their property, buying a property, putting a plan in place and outlining that will give them some direction, which therefore I think that they will take action, or at least then you'll understand very clearly, very quickly, how serious are they? Thanks so much. So about 75% of our audience hasn't liked, followed, or subscribed to our podcast. It would mean the world to us, and it would help this podcast more than you know to expand our reach if you were to like, follow, or subscribe on any of the platforms that you're watching or listening on. Thanks again.